Hello cadets and welcome to Captain's Dry Dock Academy and in this tutorial we'll be learning how to solder. Now what is soldering? Essentially it's pretty much getting two bits of material and gluing them together but those two bits of material are wire, metal and the glue is solder and the difference between the glue and the solder is that we need a special tool called a soldering iron. Now many people I've seen out there on the internet world have said I wish we could I wish I could do that but I just don't have the money but that is not an excuse. Soldering iron kits are out there and they're super cheap. In fact here's a few as an example here. Now they come with not just a soldering iron but the flux, the soldering wire, the sucker, everything you need to be able to get on your way and making a basic circuit and that's what we're going to do in this tutorial learning how to actually put together a LED with its resistor and also using heat shrink to insulate it all with the handy and useful soldering iron. Let's get going. Soldering. The basic tools required for soldering are a soldering iron, soldering wire, flux, a stand, a sucker and a tip cleaner which is either a sponge that sometimes is part of the stand or a separate wire ball. These are used to clean the tip of the soldering iron. There are additional tools and materials that aren't essential to be able to solder but they do make the job easier such as wire strippers to strip the insulation from the wire that also have a dual purpose of cutting. A soldering iron station that acts like an additional set of hands to hold everything in place as you solder and insulation tape or better yet heat shrink. In this example we'll make a fully working wired up and insulated LED with its own resistor. Working out which resistor to use is covered in a separate tutorial on this playlist that can be navigated to here or via the link below in the description section. Step 1. Preparation. If you're using a sponge to clean a soldering iron, add a little water for it to soak up and let it expand. This is where we can wipe the soldering iron tip clean as we go. Heat up the soldering iron. If it has a variable temperature dial, dial it up to 350 celsius or over. The melting point of solder wire varies but this I've often found to be sufficient. The reason why not to put it on maximum all the time is that it can shorten the lifespan of the tip which will then need to be replaced and cost money. Strip the ends of the wire. If you don't have strippers, a good sharp hobby knife or passing the wire through a loose grip of wire cutters can do the job. Get into the discipline of alternating wire colours. It doesn't matter which colours, just so long you know what wire represents positive and what wire represents negative. If you're colour blind, choose contrasting tones such as black and white. If you have a soldering station, clamp the LED in place but if you don't have one and you can't afford one yet, you can be inventive and use a washing peg, plus a scene or anything non-conductive that can hold a small component in place without damaging it. Identify what's the positive and negative leg of the LED. This is indicated by the length where the longest leg is positive and the shortest is negative. Using friction to attach the wires, this has a benefit of holding everything in place as you solder and it's also reassuring that the wires won't come apart easily if you solder the joint and it's weak. You can do this in a few ways, either folding the wires together as if they're arm in arm or wrapping the wire around the leg. Apply the flux on the area you want to join. This greasy waxy substance allows the solder to flow more easily. If you buy a soldering iron kit it will most likely come with solder wire. 
This is likely to be suitable for almost all our requirements. But when buying more solder wire, it can be daunting, as some brands are made up with a mixture of lead and tin, which many engineers prefer due to the low melting temperature and shiny finish. And other brands are increasingly going lead free, especially if you live in the EU, so to be environmentally friendly. The latter have a higher melting point and not so shiny finish. But it doesn't matter, it will still work as well, because either solder wire type is suitable for all these needs. The only thing you might have a personal choice about is the gauge. This is another word for the diameter of the wire. This will depend on how small of the area you're soldering. I personally find that 1mm wire is good for most of these purposes. Step 2. Soldering Finally, after all this waffle about soldering, we finally get to do it. The soldering iron should be fully heated up by now, so be careful. At this stage, we need to give the tip a thin coat of solder. This helps better conduct the heat and is called tinning. Hold the tip on the wire for a few seconds. This will heat it up and make it easier for the solder to flow and make the joint. Then feed the solder onto the spot until it makes a joint. Now we have to do the same on the next leg. If you're not happy with your joints, you can just always start again by heating up the area and using the sucker to instantly remove the solder. And there we have it, a component that will instantly work. Step 3. Cleaning. Cut any stray wire and wipe away any flux that didn't evaporate when soldering. Step 4. Insulation. This is the most often overlooked and important step, as if mist increases the risk of a short circuit. To avoid the exposed wires touching and ruining our day, use either electrical tape or better yet, heat shrink. These handy tubes shrink half their size when heat is applied and give a professional clean setup and peace of mind that your circuit won't fail. All you need to do is slip the tube over the exposed wire and gently without touching apply the heat slowly along it until it starts shrinking. Step 5. Testing. This can be done immediately after soldering and as you can see it works perfectly and ready enough to go into your model or prop.